Shalom Yasharal. I'm going to start by saying Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shai, Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shai. I'm going to give double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone and salutations and Shalom to you sincere brothers pushing this true culture for wins. I'm going to do this uh, sit down about uh, lamenting and calling out to the Father, begging him for mercy, man, because um, in these last days, seconds, and times, we're going to need it. You know, when you go through the people that in the Bible, like King David and Job, and you read those books, they had intimate relationships with Yahweh Bashan Yahushua, man. They, they sup with him. They call out to him. They, they tear with him, man. You know? They, and then you look at all of how big the book of uh, Psalms is. You look how big the book of Job is, man. That was a lot of meditation and praying and lamenting that them brothers did with our Heavenly Father. And, um... That's what Paul said, pray without ceasing. But when you pray, man, you beg the Father for mercy, man, for what's to come. We know what's to come. And I'm gonna give you a, um, I'm gonna give you an example about uh, praying without ceasing and knowing Salakia. When you know what's to come, what you're supposed to do with the Father. You know all hell is breaking loose. You know the worst atrocities known to man since the planet has been in orbit is about to happen in our damn time. So what do you do? Let's see uh, what Ezra did. Ezra was in ancient times, but he was able to, you know, he was a prophet. He was able to see what was going to happen in our damn time. I'm going to start at verse 1. It say, woe be, unto, woe be unto thee, Babylon, Asia. Woe be unto thee, Egypt, Syria. And Babylon, America is all of those rolled up in the one enchilada. It's spiritual Babylon, it's spiritual Egypt, it's spiritual Assyria. But let me, let me scoop down to verse 17. All right, this second Ezra, 16 and 17. Now, you got to put yourself in his damn time. Ezra saw faggots walking around, but he saw this... He saw martial law clear as day. He saw the demons unleashed what we prophesy about week in and week out. He saw it in a visual depiction of it. And let's see what that brother said. He said, woe is me. Woe is me. All right. You know, woe means destruction. Like, what the fuck? Who going to survive this shit? That's what he was seeing. He was seeing people getting killed in the billions. People getting killed in the millions. Stadiums blowing up full of... 80,000, 90,000 people. Pandemics breaking out. People dying in the millions from daily diseases. People killing each other in the streets. Just no order. No, no, just lawlessness. He saw this. And his and this came to his mind. A man of the Lord. Who would deliver me in those days? That's what he said. Who would deliver me in those days? All right. The beginning of sorrows, great mornings. The beginning of famine, great death. The scriptures say great death. Great death, man. The beginning of wars. Power shall stand in fear. They say power shall stand in fear. Entities that have a lot of power, they're going to fear and tremble. Okay? The beginning of evils. What shall I do when this evil shall come? All right? I'm going to go back to verse 15. And I'm going to see what he said when he said, what shall I do when these evils shall come? And we should, you know, things done aforetime time was done for our learning. All right. All right. Let me start at verse. No, I need verse eight. In verse eight. Verse three. Second Ezra's. I didn't even have to go that route. I could just. I be tripping sometime. This second Ezra's verse three. All right. He said, there be many creative, but few shall be saved. He see the pandemic. He seen all the atrocity that was coming to man. He said, so I answered and said, swallow then, O my soul, understanding and, de and devour wisdom. All right. He said, I need to get all the wisdom I can handle. Then it go hand in hand with Isaiah the 33rd chapter. All right. But who gives wisdom? I will have the Father give it to those who ask. And he gives it liberally. But what when you read King David, King David was asking the Heavenly Father for mercy and grace consistently, over and over, you know? And I'm about to go through some precepts, and this is what we should be doing, okay? All right, let me get, uh, 
you Psalms the 57th chapter. Start at the first verse. You're supposed to be begging for mercy, man. Just because we out there on the highways and byways, all the brothers on the highways and byways are not of the elect, man. That's not a shoe in because you're a part of GMS, man. Now you have to have a relationship. Them 144 is like Enoch. Every one of them. They say, Enoch, walk with Yahweh shot. That mean, e it mean Enoch, walk with Yahweh. All right? Through his faith, he was translated. That mean he had a relationship with Yahweh, man. You, you got brothers out there just rehearsing it and going over, saying the same thing week in and week out, like mockingbirds, but they don't have no relationship. They don't have faith. You got somebody, some brothers preach Yahweh shot with contention and they looking to get glorified by man. All right. But you got to have for you to be delivered when it's time to put up and shut up. You, pale lips can say anything. The most high is dealing with those that seek him and lament him. King David was a man at his own heart, at his own mind. Let's see what King David, how he dealt with Yahweh. Wrong chapter. All right, I said 57. All right, this 57 starts from the top. All right, now let's see what when calamities fell on King David, when atrocities hit him, let's see what he did because they about to hit us. Then I'm gonna get the precept to show you how it's about to hit us. To the chief musician, Elastrof, Mitchum, and, and David, when he fled from Saul in the cave, let's see what he did. He said, be merciful unto me, O Yahweh. Be merciful unto me. For my soul trusted in me. And look, he, he was a fugitive. He was public enemy number one. Saul was the king of Israel. So let's put it like the president of the United States put on every billboard and every media out. Look, this guy, we need to catch this guy. He's public enemy number one. All right. So that person, if the president was to do that, you have nowhere to go. You have nowhere to hide. You are truly a fugitive. Well, that's the, the, that's the shoes King David was in. The king, the pinnacle, the president was like, this guy is an outlaw. If anybody found him, if we find you aiding this guy, you're going to be put to death too. Let's see what you, let King David did. Be merciful me to Yahweh. Be merciful unto me, Yahweh. Be merciful unto me, for my soul trusted in thee. Yeah, in the shadow of thy wings, I will make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. All right? We got them calamities coming. We need to... Pray to Yahweh about Shema Shai that he be our, our strong tower, man. That we could go in his pavilion and be comforted, man. He shall send from heaven and save me from the approach of him that will swallow me up. And that's Esau. All right? He was talking about Saul, but we could liken this to Esau. All right? Selah. Yahweh shall send forth his mercy and his truth. Wisdom, not wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time. That's his truth, all right? Understanding of the scriptures and applying the scriptures to your everyday life, man. Having faith in the scriptures, believing in what you read, not just memorizing them, believing in what you what you read and living it. All right. My soul is among lions. What do lions do? They devour. All right. They consume. I even among I and I lie even among them that are set on fire. All right. Even the sons of men whose teeth are spears and arrows and their tongue are sharp sword. All right. He was going through hell. He was going through people trying to kill him. That's what's going to happen to us. Be thou exalted, O Yahweh, above the heavens. Let thy glory be over all the earth. That they have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bowed down. They have dig a pit before me into the midst whereof they are falling in themselves. All right. So you got to pray to the most high man that he subdue your enemies. You got to pray to the most high. Say, um, Like what happened with Mordecai. They, they bring out the gallows for you to hang from. Let them hang from the motherfuckers. They deal a ditch, man. Let them dig too. But you got to pray for comfort. You got to lament to the father. David lamented, man. All right. Verse seven. My heart is fixed, O Yahweh. My heart is fixed. I will sing of thy praise, man. And you praise him every day for keeping keeping you in his truth. That's another thing. You got to praise him and thank him for giving you this doctrine of life, man. Day in and day out. All right. Let me get another precept. All right. Uh, 
I'm going to get Luke, the 18th chapter. I'm just giving you some examples, man, of uh, everything done the fourth time was done for our learning, man. So we we supposed to learn from the ancient men of old, all right? This is Luke 18, all right, 35, all right. This is Luke 18 and 35, and it came to pass that as he was coming nigh to Jericho, that's talking about our great king, Yahweh a certain blind man sat by the wayside begging, and hearing the multitude pass by, he asked what it meant, and they told him that Yahweh of Nazareth was passed by, all right? This is somebody blind, somebody in hell. When you blind, you in hell, man. That's, that's a form of hell, man. You're in a lower state when you blind, man. You can't see, man. All right. All right. And he cried, saying, Yahweh shot the son of David, have mercy on me. And and they which went before rebuked him, and he should not, and he should hold his peace. But he cried so much the more, thou son of David, have mercy on me. You see what I'm saying? You gotta man, fuck what a nigga say. Now, you know, that's an inside joke around most high camp. But on for fuck. What man say, man, you got to beg. You got to lament to the father. This guy was like, they was telling him to shh, be quiet. No, he kept, he had faith. Hey, Yahweh Shai, have mercy on me, son of David. Yahweh Shai. <coughs> the disciples said, man, shut the fuck up, man. This man got business to him. Yahweh Shai, he ignoring the world, man. You know, that's the type of faith we got to have. He was like, thou son of David, have mercy on me. That's what we got to do. That's what we got to be doing right now. We have to be doing it right now. And Yahweh Shah stood and commanded, commanded him to be bought unto him. You got to get the Lord attention. You got to come petition. Like when, when I remember when, when uh, I was young and Jays used to come out. All right. I go ask my mom and my dad. Back and forth the whole week. Dad, let me get him. No, fuck you, son. Mama, let me get him. Well, if you pick up your grades, baby. Well, daddy, my mama said if I pick up my grades, well, she right, son. You pick up your grades, I get them. You know what I'm saying? But I petition, I remind them, I remind them. Go to them. I ask them more than once. That's how we got to be doing your Yahweh shot. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh shot. Because we can't go to the father unless we go through the son, man. And for y'all don't know who Yahweh Shai is, that's Yahweh in the name of his son, Yahweh Shai. All right? And whenever you ask the, our great power for something, our great king, when he walked earth, he told us, whatever you ask in his name, he would do it. He's talking about spiritual things. And, and, and asking for mercy from the calamities to come. Don't ask for no fucking Bima. Bima ain't going to do nothing for you. Uh, money ain't going to do nothing for you. Because in the day, what is scripture in Proverbs? Hold up, I know it. Money not gonna do nothing for you. Be careful what you ask for, cause he can get it. You ask him for money, he might give you money. But what good is money gonna do you when shit hits the fan? All right, this is Proverbs 4, I think it's 11. That's not it. Is it 11 and four? Let's see, let's see. Proverbs 11 and four, here we go. Proverbs 11 and four. Richest prophet, not in the day of wrath. We ask for mercy from the day of wrath. We ask in Yahabah Shem and Shai, comfort us from the day of wrath. Silver or gold do you no good in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivered from death. And how do you be righteous? By soaking up wisdom and knowledge to stabilize you and living according to that wisdom and knowledge, man. All right, let me give you another precept. Money ain't gonna do you no good when shit hit the fan. Money ain't gonna do you no good when shit hit the fan, man. You need the father to have mercy because the father is the one, he say, I create light, I create evil. He's the one bringing these things to pass, man. This is Zephaniah 1 and 8, and it shall come, come to pass in the day, in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish prisoners and the, child, and, and the king's children and all such that are clothed with strange apparel. In the same day, I will punish all those that leap on the threshold, which fill their master's house with violence and deceit. All right? And the oppressor does that, but our people take after the oppressor. They do the same shit. 
and then verse 10 and then it shall come to pass in the day said Yahweh, there shall be no noise of a cry from the fish gate and no howling from his second and a great crashing from the hills all right how ye inhabitants of macintosh for all the merchant people are cut down all that they bear silver are cut off okay all those that have money are cut off what what good shit uh uh, business and commerce not going to help you in that day. Let me skip down to verse 18 and get to the point. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of your house wrath. So when you praying to the Lord, oh Lord, send me a blessing. Send me some money. Send me some Federal Reserve notes. That's not going to deliver you, man. You, you want to be in good standing with your heart by Shemar Shah. That's why you got to seek him while he may be found. Learn what's well pleasing to him. What's well pleasing to him is when you building up the kingdom of heaven, being a light to the Gentiles, uh, dwelling with your brothers together in unity, man. All right. Get back to the regular schedule program. All right. Uh, get back to the book of Luke. 18th chapter, man. You see that brother that was, um, the brother that Yahweh shot healed, he had the right idea, man. You got to beg for mercy, man. Okay? Luke 18, verse 5. All right, let me get back to that. Verse 40. And Yahweh shot stood and commanded him, commanded him to be brought unto him. And when he was come near, he asked him, saying, what without that I should do unto thee? And he said, Yahweh Yah shot, that I may receive sight. And Yahweh shot said to him, receive thy sight. Thy faith has saved thee. All right? And immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying Yahweh. Man, you got to follow Yahweh by Shemar Shai, man. You know what I'm saying? We have to follow him. The way we follow him is study these scriptures. <coughs> study these scriptures. Salakia. And all the people, when they saw it, they gave Yahabah Shema Pray, They gave praise until Yahabah Shema Hushah. But that guy, when people told him to be, be quiet, he kept petitioning and calling out to him, man. That's what we got to do, man. I want to be confident. And if, if and another thing you got to ask him for is not just to be confident, whatever you got to go through give you the strength to go through it. Because, you know, we prepare for the worst. Um, uh, a number of us are going to um, get put to death. You know, I'm like your Howard Shire. Lord, if that cup pass for me, so be it. But if not, let your will be done. You know, I don't want to get tortured by you, so I don't want to get beheaded. But if I got to do it for your how about Shim Howard Shire, it's an honor. So you got to pray for that faith. Whatever you go through, Paul knew he was about to get beheaded. And he said, I had run a good race. I had fought the good fight. He embraced death. So you got to be in that. Them, them seven brothers from the seven Maccabees pray for faith to move mountains. So you, shit, when, when I mean, when they about to kill you and torture you, like, you make them, you you embrace it so good you make them mad, man. That's, that's the kind of faith you got to ask for. All right? I need Genesis, the 32nd chapter. The 24th verse. All right? And our great, and our uh, patriarch, you know, our big brother, Yaiqua. Let's see what he did. Let's show, see how he petitioned your how about your mouth shot. All right? He, he ain't stop. He ain't play. All right? And Yaiqua was left alone. This Genesis 32 and 24. And Yaiqua was left alone. And there wrestled a man with him until the break another day. And that was an angel. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow, the hollow of his thigh. Now, this, 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 this Yaiqua... Jacob, he's wrestling with an angel, begging an angel to give him a blessing. He ain't give up. You know, he wrestling with him all night, all night to sunrise. All right? And and the hollow of, of Yaiqua's star was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day break him. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. D Jacob was greedy, man. In righteousness, a righteous greedy. He had already got the birthright then he had went and got the blessing 
Now he want another blessing. Man, that's what you... Elisha asked for a... Hey, Elijah. Elijah asked Elisha, what do you want? He said, give me a double portion of wisdom, man. Give me a double portion of what you got. Those are the type of things you need to be asking for. Yahweh Bashem Shai, give me a quadruple dose of faith. Give me a, a quadruple dose of of uh, your, your knowledge. Open up my understanding like you did the disciples so my, I might understand the scriptures and I might go teach your scriptures. Those are the things we're supposed to be asking for and we're supposed to be lamenting. And this is the reason we gotta be lamenting, man. Only the strong will survive. This is uh, Revelation 12, verse 12, okay? Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth he have but a short time. So when Satan come, man, you want you want to Yahweh Bashim Al Shah to be with you. Alright? When Yahweh Bashim Al Shah is with you, who can be against you? You know? Fuck the world. Fuck the demons of, of hell. And they doing Yahweh's build. They appeasing the wrath of Yahweh. You know? They doing what they created to do. So you got to do what you created to do, man. Our power source is Yahweh by Shemal Shai. You got to beg for mercy. Lament for what's to come, man. And um, be a good, faithful servant, man. So with that, um, Lord willing, this was edifying to the, the people that look at it. I want to give um, infinite honor to you. Barakat Yahweh, Barakat Yahweh Shai, Barakat Yahweh, Barakat Yahweh Shai. I want to get infinite honors to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rakar Kadash, and um, salutation to the apostles of Great Millstone, and salutation to your sincere brothers pushing this truth. Quan Yasharali.